I'm Katie Greenleaf Martin, and I'm the executive director of the Spark Pals Consortium. And I am really just saying hello to everybody today and wishing you happy February because Elizabeth Davis, our support and project management specialist, um, is really our data guru and our go to for all things um, data related. And so um, we are very excited to have her um, helping us with all things annual report this year. And um, I do want to note that what we're going to do today is kind of walk through all the resources that we have. We um, will have some time for Q&A and we will try to go through as many of the individual questions as we can. The other things that we're going to do are we're going to have open office hours a number of times in February and then for um, you know if you if you are struggling with it we encourage you to come to the office hours if either of those office hours times don't work for you or we find that the way that your library's data um, is going to require a little bit more one-on-one -on -one attention we can schedule individual appointments with people so just be aware that you know today is not the the last day of our assistance with this and we will get to as many questions as we can, but we'll also have some other times for people to do that maybe once they've looked at it a little bit more. So thank you all for being here today. Thanks Kat for being a uh, host and recorder and I will let Elizabeth take it away. Thanks. Um, let me share my screen. Well, actually, before I do that, I do wanna um, preface this whole thing <laughs> is that these, Templates are based on my understanding of the annual report and the questions. So again, like Katie said, depending on how your collection or your patrons are set up, um, results may vary slightly. Um, and I just wanna repeat something that Michelle Legate, my former uh, colleague would say is, we're gonna try the best we can. And if we make a mistake, we'll try and fix it and we'll try and do better next year. So it's not that scary. <laughs> so let's get started. And I should I should have added to Elizabeth that any advice that we provide is not a substitute for advice from the Office of Commonwealth Libraries. And if anybody does find, you know, those of you who are able to go to the trainings and things like that, if you find any places where our documentation isn't agreeing with the advice that you've been given, please feel free to let us know. Um, we can either, you know, reach out to OCL for further clarification. We can make make those changes. So, yes, this is is the beginning of us trying to provide more more support for this, and also the beginning of OCL trying to kind of standardize how some of this data is collected. So it is definitely a work in progress. Okay, thank you. So um, I put a link in the chat uh, to the support page. All of the documentation that I referenced today will be found there. Um, if you've not visited our support portal, this is what it'll look like. If you need Spark specific um, help, you'll click this one. It says Spark reports or support. And then all the topics will be listed down here. And then also an option to contact us directly. Everything should be listing under this first one for the annual report documentation. And I have it broken out into three different sets. So it's going to go and walk you through setting up your report folders. So if you are new to running reports in Evergreen, this will walk you through the process. And I'll mimic this shortly. Just wanted to make sure you saw it. We also have uh, an article on selecting and cloning reports, and we'll go through that as well. Um, it's really important that everyone clones the templates rather than just running the report from the shared folder, because if there is an error and we need to update the template, I can't delete it if uh, someone has run a report on it already. So cloning is great in this instance. And then you'll see here the 2022 template instructions. And this will uh, walk you through every single question that uh, is ILS related. Uh, and it'll have any of the variations on the questions depending on how we set up the templates. So 
everything will be found here and every one of them should have step-by-step -step photo with photos or screen cap captures on how to run it. So if you work better like with IKEA directions, we got you covered. And if you need verbal uh, directions, we got you covered. So, all right, so let's get started. So uh, again, if you're new to reports, uh, we're gonna have to create some folders. So uh, you're gonna get started. You can find the reporter using uh, the icon here on the administration screen, or you can use the drop down menu. You'll notice, again, if you don't have any folders, your screen is going to look uh, like this, with like little blank sheets of paper. And all you have to do is click on the first one, and you're going to name your folder. And we'll just call this annual report. You always have the option to share. So if you want to share this report or any of the contents of this folder with anyone else, you can uh, select the share option. And then you'll have obviously different options. I'm logged in as our test server who is graciously named the Nugget Davis Memorial Free Friendly Library of Pennsylvania after my cat. Um, you'll have your library, your system, and uh, the Spark library uh, wide. Um, you can share Spark wide. We just ask that you share things that you're confident run correctly, that you don't get any bugs or errors with. So I'm going to keep it at the Nugget Memorial Library, or Friendly Library. So I'll just create the subfolder and click OK once I get that uh, successful uh, message. And you'll have to repeat it for each step for templates, reports, and outputs. It will carry over the name. So you can just hit Create again, and it'll create for you. And the same for outputs. So now that you have your three parts, you're ready to start cloning templates. Does anyone have any questions thus far? I'm sure a lot of you have done this a few times. OK. Um, <clears throat> OK. Now, the shared templates will be located in, a, uh, in the share folder section. So what you'll do is you'll click the arrow next to templates, and it will expand to all of the folders that are shared with you. Uh, either at your library, at your system level, or at um, the Spark level. We've na named it handily Annual Report, so it should be at the top for most of you. And you'll click the arrow next to it. There are two sets. I'm going to work primarily from the 2022 with documentation. This one will match up all of the verbiage that we've used in the documentation, so I encourage you to do the same. You'll click again the arrow to expand it, and you'll see that each folder or each question has its own subfolder. And it should match up to the uh, current question number and the old question number. So if you're working off maybe documentation that you wrote from last year that you, when you ran your reports, you'll be able to match up the numbers a little easily. So let's start with the first one, um, or what I consider the first one, cataloged items. When you click the folder, you'll see you have four options of templates. And these will all dictate on how you organize your collection and how you um, how your financial calendar. Are you a calendar year or are you fiscal year? For those of you who can, uh, catalog all of your items to be owned by one library at the top of the system, you'll use uh, the templates that are uh, have the words by circulating library. And if you are a library that runs yours on uh, a fiscal calendar, so you run June, no, July to end of June, you'll use the ones that are filters on date. If you use a regular calendar year, you can just use the ones that are filters on year. Does that make sense for everyone? Okay. 
I'm looking to see if anyone questions. OK, so um, in my first example, I'll pick on my old friends over in Lackawanna. And I know that they catalog everything where the owning library and the circulating library are the same. So I'm going to use owning library. And we they run on a calendar year. So we're going to clone their uh, this template cataloged items by owning library and filters on year. So to clone it, we'll just check the box next to the name that we want. And from this drop down menu, we're going to select clone selected template and hit submit. So this is where our folders come into play. We're going to pick the folder that we want to save our template in. And this lovely scary screen will load and you have to do absolutely nothing other than hit this save template. You'll hit continue. It could, you could change the name if you want, but I would recommend keeping it the same just to make sure that you know what question this is for. You'll get uh, an alert that says the template has saved and you're ready to go to run it. I would recommend going through and picking each and cloning each of the templates that you need before you kind of run them all, but you can do it one at a time if you prefer as well. Are there any questions about how to clone or how to pick which template you need? Give everybody a minute. And Elizabeth, I can stop you if anybody has questions in the chat. I can I can keep that up on my screen. Okay. Great. I'm not seeing anything or hearing anything. So um, we'll go through and we'll run this first template. So I'm going to navigate to my folders and to my uh, template folder, subfolder that I saved my clone in. I'm going to check the box next to it, the, to the one I want to run. And from this drop down menu, I'm going to make sure create a new report from selected template is requested, is selected. And I'm going to hit submit. The first line is going to be the name of the template. And then the second is going to be uh, the template creator. Your name or your username is always going to be here. It'll have the description. And as you can see, some of the description has some of the instructions on how to run it. There will be this documentation URL. There is a slight bug that it doesn't load here, but I will show you how to open it in another window um, in a minute. The first thing that you'll have to fill out is the name. Again, this can be whatever name you want. Um, it does have to be unique, so you'll want to make sure you're, if you're running it multiple times for one library at a time, you can run it for multiple libraries if you wish. Um, it just matter of preference. You don't have to put anything in the description, but if you want, or if you're maybe sending this report to other users, um, sometimes the description helps. The next section here is going to outline report columns, what you should be expecting to see. So you should expect to see your library name and the count of items. You can use the pivot table column, especially if you're running it for multiple libraries, if you want, or if you have multiple columns. Um, this one only has two, so it's not really, it won't benefit from the pivot uh, table. So you can skip those two. The first thing, uh, the folder you'll select is whichever one you want to save the report to. And the first real question that you're going to answer is, since we're looking at items cataloged by the owning library, we're going to put in the year 2023. And we're doing this because we're looking for items that were cataloged before this year. So if you read the column or the row, it'll say create date of the item. That's what that means. We're looking at a year at a time. 
and we're looking for less than 2023. So we're looking for everything that was cataloged in 2022 and earlier. The next question is who owns the items? So we have, you can look in this uh, column here for kind of a hint. And we're looking for owning library. So I said we were going to pick on Lackawanna. So let's scroll up. Your library will be highlighted automatically, but I'm logged into another library. So that's why it's not selecting. You can select one library at a time and hit add. Or if you click on one and hold down the shift key and scroll up or use the arrows, it will select multiple and you can add them all in one go. The next question that is already filled in for us and it is asking the question, is the item deleted? And we don't want deleted items. So we're gonna get that one is answered false. Next, we're gonna uh, select our output options. Excel is very popular if you want. If you wanna save a copy of this report, I would recommend that one. Um, you can do uh, calculate grouping subtotals. If this helps if there are multiple things listed or numbers, um, if you want. The HTML output is good as well, as you'll see in a minute. And this one does have numbers, so you could use a bar chart, but I, I don't need that information, so I'm gonna uncheck it. The next two are for reoccurring. We can skip that for now, but in the, if you were using this on another template, you would be able to set that up to reoccur. And we're gonna have it run as soon as possible. Uh, we're gonna enter the email address. Let's do support. Uh, if you want this e report to be emailed to you, you can add your email. You can add a series of emails by just separating them by a comma, or you can leave it empty if you don't want to get it. It's a matter of personal preference. And then finally, you have to pick the output folder where this uh, report is gonna live, where the output is gonna live. So select your folder and uh, hit save report. You'll get uh, info that the action has succeeded and you'll hit OK. So depending on if you put your email address in, we'll wait for it to arrive. Or if you're impatient like me, you can do the output folder. Uh, click on the little arrow next to it and click on annual or whatever report folder you saved it to. If it's still running, it will display up here under pending items. And when it's complete, it'll list under the completed section here at the bottom. So to look at the uh, output, you'll put a check in the box. And you'll make sure that this option here in this drop down is view report output. We're going to hit submit. And this screen will load. Um, is it loading the preview cat? OK, yes. Okay, I want. I never know if I hit screen or or window if I'm doing that one right. So I'm glad this is loading correctly. This will load um, as a preview. Uh, if you want to see, like, did the numbers look okay? You can hit your tabular output and you get like a brief screenshot, and then you'll see how it got totaled here at the bottom. And then if you want to download that, um, you'll hit go back to output index and you'll hit Excel and then you can save it wherever you want. All right, so that's question E1, uh, old 74 cataloged items. Does anyone have questions? I will share that in the documentation we review this, but if you are running this on, say, um, a date field, uh, you'll see here 
Again, you'll want to look at this row and just kind of see what kind of info you should be expecting to enter. If it has date, that means it needs a firm full date, not just a year. So if you put in 2023 and it stays red, that means you need to put in a full date or a different format of the date. And you can look at the transform column to see uh, what format it should be in. So for this one, you would probably put 0101, so the 1st of January. Or if you're running it July to June, you would do, oh my goodness, what, what day 20? 2101, no. 20. It would be, yeah, 20, well, yeah, so the, the 21, 22, fiscal year would be 2021 07 01 to 2022 06 30. Yeah, so that, okay, yeah, so if you want it before the end of the fiscal year, then it would be 22 06 30, technically speaking. I, probably most of us don't catalog a ton of things between the, the one day. Yeah. So that's just something to note. Okay, any questions about question one? Okay, I'm just gonna do highlights now. So does everyone feel comfortable with the cloning and accessing your cloned copies? Or does anyone want me to do it from the whole, the whole workflow from the beginning? Okay, we did mute everyone just so you're aware. <laughs> Elizabeth, do you want to do it one more time all the way through and then we'll switch to? Okay, so we'll go to print materials. Yes, Angela, if your library catalogs everything where owning and circulating are the same in the item record, this is where we're looking for it. Um, this is that distinction because we'll talk about checkout library later. So that's a little different. So let me, let me pull up a record just to show you. Um, so, um, if when you look at your items, your circ library here and your owning library is the same, if these are the same, you can use owning. There aren't that many libraries that use, will be using circulating, um, but we did wanna provide the template for if you wanted to run it that way. Okay, so let's look at print materials. Again, you'll go down to the shared folders. You'll click the arrow next to annual report. And then again, the arrow next to the 2022 with documentation. And you'll click the folder for print materials. Again, you'll be faced with the same four options. Actually, all of the e-questions will have these options, just so you're aware. So this is running it uh, print materials. Uh, we'll run it again by owning because that seems to be the most popular. So I'm going to put the check in the box to clone it. I'm going to select clone selected template from the drop down menu and hit submit. I'm going to select the folder I want it to live in. And I'm just going to hit save. I don't need to change anything. And now I'm ready to run it. So I'm going to go to my templates, my annual report folder. And if you want to see the documentation for each um, template, you can click on it from here. And it will open in a new tab and take you directly to that page on how to run uh, that template. So 
So we'll let's run it. So we'll put our check in our box and we'll make sure create new report from selected template is selected. Again, it'll have the title and the creator. And then in this description, it kind of gives you how to run it as well. And then what information you should be expecting. So let's name it. Again, you can provide a report description if you want. The next one is going to be uh, the owning library, the circ modifier, and the number of those items. So this is on all, we're going to be running it on all the print circulation modifiers. If you're running it for multiple libraries, uh, this one probably would benefit from a pivot table. And you can do it on owning library. And then you'll pick your folder that you want it to live in. And let's run it. I see Christine here from Wayne. So we're going to run it on some Wayne people. <laughs> Sorry, Chrissy. <laughs> so we're going to select all of our org units and we're going to hit add. Now, this one is looking for a uh, print circulation modifier. So I know book is print. If you use the book club kit, you might want to use that one. I'm going to skip over the DVDs. I'm going to skip over electronic device. I'm going to include government docs. Not everyone will use that one. I'm going to include, let's see, it has it up here, book. And then, oh, I forgot my high demand. High demand books. And it says reference up here, but that is actually non-circulating. I have to fix that. So those are the ones that I assume most people use. And again, this one is going to ask for that create date because we only want items that were created before 2023. Put a year. And you can do your output options. So I'm going to have it calculate. Again, don't forget, you can put your email address in if you want it emailed to you. And you'll want to select your output folder. So let's hit save report to run it. And we'll find our output either in our email or if you click on the output folder here. And you'll see that it is in pending since it's still running. And you can keep clicking this until it finishes. It might take a minute because we're running it on multiple libraries. <laughs> so again, I'm not very patient. So I will incessantly click it until it's done. And now that it's in the completed, I can see that it's done. You'll check the box next to print materials or whatever you named your report. And as long as view report output is selected, you can hit submit. And you'll have your uh, options. You can do tabular output. And you see how it has broken out the circulation modifiers this way, and then all of the libraries across the top. It does a weird thing where sometimes it puts the total row in weird spots. I have to put a bug in for that. Uh, but this is just a. Um, not, it's not the end of the world. The math is still correct. It just displays funny. If you want to uh, download this report, you'll click back, go back to output text and download it in Excel. Um, and then you can do whatever um, manipulation. Say you want to get rid of that, you can. Are there any questions on that one? Uh, something I just thought of, Elizabeth, that we hadn't talked about previously, but 
one thing that we could show people um, and maybe make a support article on is, okay, I liked that. I liked that output. I got it was exactly the way that I want it. How do I schedule it to run on January 1st of 2024? <laughs> January 1st of every year after that, so that I don't have to think about it again. You can. Um, and as we all know, the annual report never changes. Never, never changes. So you, you could schedule these to run if you want. Uh, we'll do that with the, not the next one, but the one after it. Okay. Let me, let me highlight the periodicals one, because this one's a little, a little tricky, because it's not asking you for how many copies you have. It's asking you for the number of titles you have. And just out of curiosity, how many of you catalog your periodicals? Uh, you can, okay, Chris, Chrissy does, okay. Um, Sherry uses a dummy barcode. Okay, so this one, okay, Mary Beth does, okay. This one will depend on how you catalog your items. So this will be one of those ones that is um, hypothetical. Depends on your situation. If you catalog your item, if you catalog your periodicals, you can use this one, old uh, E2A uh, current periodical titles. And I'm gonna break my own rule and I'm gonna run it without cloning it. So this so, Elizabeth would be people who catalog their periodicals and they use the CERC serial mod serials. serials. Okay. So this one, uh, again, you title it, you'll put it in your folder that you want it to live in. You'll pick your, if you're running it on the year, you'll have it run on 2023. Uh, Chrissy says, or wait, who else does? Okay, Mary Beth. Mary Beth, can I use just Martin? Cool. Okay. I'm just going to run it on Martin. And it already asks if it's delete, make sure it's not deleted. And it already has the serial. Um, Circ modifier in there. So all you're answering on this one is the year and the library. So uh, again, select your output options. And if you hypothetically wanted this one to run every year, you could check the box to have it for uh, reoccurring and you can do it. Um, no. We'd have to do a relative date up here one year ago mm -hmm. and then do that so i'll write up documentation on this one this one's a little tricky to run oh. okay so we're going to do output in my annual folder i'm going to save And once it's done, I'm gonna click on that box to view output report. And let's do just the tabular output. So you'll see that it just has the title based on how you catalog it. So it's not gonna tell you how many copies you have attached to that title, because the question as I understood it is it just needs to know how many titles you have current subscriptions on. So you'll want to go through and check and make sure that you do indeed still have AARP, the magazine, as a subscription when you report your number. Does that make sense for those of you who catalog your magazines or journal subscriptions? Okay. If you don't and you use a... Um, when you go, when people bring up magazines to the counter and you select from the checkout option, if you select something from here, 
for non cataloged items. So say magazines or periodicals and you just hit submit and say I'm checking out 10. You're going to want to use a different template. So let's go back to the reports. And that template will be called non cataloged item circulation and in house use. And you'll use non catalog circulation count. And it will just no, this will give you, actually, let me take a minute. No, you'll just need to count your subscriptions by hand because you're not cataloging them. You'll want to look at any record keeping you keep for uh, those titles. My apologies. This is if you wanted to get the circ on those numbers. So you can still run this report later, but it won't give you the number of items. It will just tell you how often you circulated magazines. You could, I don't think we have anybody who does it this way. We could do it where we set up a non catalog type for each magazine, like people versus consumer reports. Um, if anybody really wanted to do it that way. Uh, but yeah, the 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 generic um, magazines non cat circulation will not will not help you with number of titles. Sorry, yes, I, I jumped ahead. <laughs> yeah, and most I agree, Terry. Mo most of the libraries that I've worked with, it's just like, um, I've I've actually had directors who um will walk over to the you know table o magazines and count the titles. <laughs> as a method, which I, as a former district consultant, cannot technically endorse, but um, this is, is often one where we use a little bit more informal. <laughs> so, but if you wanted... Oh, and, and Heather says it's okay, so if you're in Heather's district. <laughs> yeah. But if you, like Terry, if you needed the number of times those items went out, um, you would use this non-catalog cert count. So um, I'll just finish running it and uh, we'll use Terry as an example. <laughs> just to finish the thought. Uh, Terry, can you refresh me on what library you're at? I'm sorry. Um, Myersdale? Okay, thank you. I knew it was over in Somerset County. Um, okay, so this one, is, since it's a circ, it's gonna just want the year that you're looking at the circulation. You can hard type in the numbers if you want. Or you can use the calendar to pick the dates uh, that you wanna look at. And if you ever forget to complete a component, it will remind you and give you a heads up that you forgot to pick something. And in this case, I forgot to pick a folder. We wait for it to run. Okay. And we don't have anything for that number. So we, if you feel confident that you did have CERCs, we can look into it further to support, put in a support ticket and we can check and make sure that um, it's running correctly. So that is, um, we reviewed uh, the current list of periodic titles for E2A. And then we also looked at the CERC of those items with the non-cataloged item circulation reports. Any questions thus far? Okay. Uh, okay. You're
uh, they got to <laughs> get to it. OK. When you're ready, just let us know and we can help if you need it. OK, so um, let's look at uh, question E6. So this is your physical audio, not anything that you get from a vendor like Overdrive or Hoopla. This is physical items you have, again, in your collection. Um, I'm going to pick on the owning library filtering by year, because again, that one seems to be the most popular. We're going to create a new report. Do we so clone again, that? Are we cloning that or do we create it? Because I don't want to, I'm running it now, but I don't want to, I don't want to clone. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> yes, please clone. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes, please clone. I'm, okay. I have control over this account. So okay. I have to delete. <laughs> this is one of my test accounts. So if I need to delete the template for any reason, I can just easily go in here and delete okay. it. Okay. But unfortunately, if you do, Chrissy, I don't have control and um, I won't be able to delete it. Okay. So this is now, audiobooks. Go ahead. Can I ask you? So um, if I, if a cup a few days ago, I didn't, I didn't realize I had to clone something. So I did run some reports. Um, so I'm deleting my reports today because I just wanted to run them to see what they look like. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't use the word, I didn't choose clone. I choose to create. I okay. changed nothing, but um, still, I didn't want to. I didn't. I didn't realize I was supposed to clone, so I screwed that up. But I am deleting those reports that I ran. Okay. Is that, will I affect anything that you did? Um. No. If okay. and this is only if I need to delete that template for any reason, say like when I created it, I did it in error, and I need to update it. Yeah. I, I can't delete it unless your outputs are deleted. So if okay. you're deleting them, it'll be fine. Okay. All right. It's That's also right. it's not the end of the world. I'll just move it to another folder called can't delete. And well, I didn't want to. Okay, but I yeah, no worries. Not the okay. end of the world. All right. Thank you. We just encourage everyone to clone if you can. Okay. So. Okay. So this is audiobooks or audio, not audiobooks. There's a difference. So again, it'll have how to run it in the template description. It'll give you that info on what circulation modifiers you want to run. Again, you'll name it. Again, if you're running it on multiple libraries, you can have the pivot label be owning library. You'll mm -hmm. have your output, your report folder. And you're going to run it on a library. And I saw Rose, so I'm going to pick on Pike. I'm going to pick the two Pike locations. And I'm going to, again, it's a year. So I'm going to type in 023 because I only want everything before this year. And then I'm going to pick all of the audio circulation modifiers. So in this case, it's audiobook. If your library uses high demand audiobook, if you're not sure, add it. And if you don't get any numbers for it, that means you don't use it. It's not going to break anything. And then music and media. At its core, music is supposed to be used for musical scores. I know not everyone uses that, so you can use music and media. Uh, it just depends on how you catalog. So again, can't hurt to add both. Uh, you'll scroll down, you'll select your output options. You'll put in your email address and you'll select your folder. So I'm gonna hit save report and I'm gonna hit okay. And we wait to have it finish. And then we select it and we view the output. Again, it gives you that uh, options and we'll do the output and we'll see Digman 
has 14.05, Milford has 11.48. And then if you again wanted to download that, you would hit back to output index and select um, Excel output and download it. Any questions on audio? Okay, we're gonna do video next. And you'll probably have started to notice a trend on some of these, uh, specifically uh, print, audio, video, and other physical materials. They're all the same template. It's just depending on how, what you're looking for in each one is, and the circulation modifier. If you're super savvy in Excel and would rather run it once for all of your libraries, you can use any of these templates and just select all the circulation modifiers and do all of the math in Excel if you'd like. If you'd rather have concrete reports for each section, you can run it on each one like we did thus far. All right, so I'm going to again pick owning just because it's the most common one. And then I'm going to re I'm going to name my report. And let's pick a new library. Uh, Marianne is here from Barrett Paradise, so let's run it on her library. Uh, she is a single location, so we don't really need the pivot label on that one. And we're going to select the report folder that we want to save it to. And we'll find Bear Paradise in the list. We'll select it. Again, it's always going to be 2023. And this one is video. So we're going to select all of the video ones. So all the DVDs. Again, if they're in a list like this and you want to select multiple at a time, you just click on the first one or hold down the shift key and select, um, click them or use the down arrows. And you can click add. I want to make sure we do the high demand ones. And we want to make sure we get video because uh, for those of you who still have uh, VHS. Uh, again, you'll select your outputs, uh, your email address if you're going to email it to yourself, and then your folder. This is Erin. Hey. Erin, can you mute yourself? Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, that ran. I can see when I clicked on my output folder. And I'm going to hit tabular output. And Bar Paradise has 2,360 DVDs. Okay. And then the last one is other physical items. And this is like my favorite one for some reason. <laughs> These are all your fun things, your cake pans, your hot spots, your ring toss games, your STEM kits, stuff like that. So things that are not already outlined in any of the other ones. So again, we'll pick um, physical owning library. And this one I'm going to run on everything just to show you if you wanted to to see how it breaks down. And I'm going to run it on multiple libraries so you can kind of see how you can get it to pivot out. So the pivot table will be owning library. And I'm going to run it on Let's do, let's do the Lehigh Valley people. Let's do it on the Lehigh Carbon, sorry. Lehigh Carbon. So I'm going to select all of them. I'm 
I'm going to pick the 2023. And this is everything that we didn't select already, if you're running it just for other. So that means electronic device, equipment, kits, but only depending on yeah. how you catalog kits. So this one will be iffy. This will be particular to your library. Uh, Realia and software. Okay. So that would be how you would run it if you were just running it on the other. If you wanted to get super fancy and run it on everything because you're a master at Excel, pick all of the circ mods and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to hit select my folder. I'm going to run the report. Let's see how messy this is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna hit the box, view my output. Not bad. Yeah, not Actually. bad. Yeah. <laughs> so this is everything that the Lehigh Carbon folks own, <laughs> in case you were curious. Um, you can put this into Excel and filter out and then answer each question. Or if you wanted to do old fashioned math, you can do it as well. or put it in Excel and do it, which I am a fan of. What I used to do so I could be lazy was I used to, to have like a letter code for audio, print, and other, and then I would assign the letter code to each of the circ mods so that I could filter by the question. Yeah. yeah. It was one of those things that probably took more time to set up than it saved, but I, I felt fancy. <laughs> I will say, uh, if you're running it for a bunch of folks, uh, it's really helpful to know how everyone catalogs things. The kit one is very particular. Some libraries use kits for a variety of different things. So um, if you are one of those libraries and you need a little bit more granular information on this, let us know and we can help you with that report. I know some libraries use kits for print books and an audio book but they also use it for like their STEM kits that they got from Office of Commonwealth Libraries. And they also use kit for like hotspots. So you have a multiple variety of formats on one circ mod and we'll have to do some fancy um, reporting on that. But it is possible, it just will take an extra step. So again, if you are one of those people, just let us know. So that's all the count of items questions. We're gonna move on to how they circed and to how many people they circed. But before we do that, are there any questions? And let me ask too, um, I know what our plan is to just kind of keep going through these um, as people have time. I think we were scheduled for two to four. Um, if there is, if anybody has a burning desire to see one of the ones that's lower down the list, we could skip to that and then go back to going through them. So we can, we can be flexible if that's helpful. Um, if you, you know, got what you needed from this presentation, then we thank you for coming in and joining us and hanging out for a while. Um, and, or if you need to leave, uh, and want to watch the rest of it, it will be up on YouTube. Um, and, uh, uh, we will be having the office hours uh, several other times throughout February and the first week of March. So plenty of time to come hang out with the Spark folks and work on reports. But we'll, we're, our plan is to just keep working through these. So, okay. All right, so let's do registered users. This is probably the most controversial question that we have on the annual report. So again, I would like to preface this, that this is open to my interpretation on understanding how the report should be run. Uh, your mileage may vary. So this one, you'll see there is a slight change. We only have two options now. We have 
registered users by home library. This one filters on date. And then we have one that filters on year. So again, this is fiscal for the filters on date and then calendar year um, filters on year. So when I run it, you'll wanna, again, check the box. You'll clone it to your own folders, excuse me. And then you'll find it in your uh, template and you'll click to run. Thank you, Mary Beth. Okay, we're gonna name it. And uh, these are the, the descriptions. So, um, and then how to run it here. So again, if you're running it for multiple libraries, you'll pick short policy name and you'll have the columns. This one only is gonna display two, two rows, so it doesn't really matter. You don't have to do a, a pivot on this. And then uh, for selected report folder, you'll pick the one you want and you'll pick the library. So Delia's here, so let's do Bethlehem. We're gonna pick all of the Bethlehem libraries. And we only want patron accounts. So this is like a, a weird thing most people don't have to think about. So you're gonna want your adult you know, do you use adult and adult three year? You're going to skip over CERC clerk, CERC supervisor, copy cataloger. You'll want to add courtesy, courtesy three year if you use it, extended, ILL, internet only, Juve. Again, your library might not use all of them. You want limited six months if you use it. You'll skip over the cataloger ones. You want outreach, you'll skip over patron because no one is actually a, patron is more of like a, a, a header in this instance. You'll skip over SIP and then the last one is temporary. Now, if you're reading the, the instructions on the annual report, it says, um, uh, Actually, I don't have that exact word. One moment. I think I put it in here. Sorry. I should have had that one up. Okay, the official description in the question is total register user at the end of the year. A registered user is a user who applied and for and received an identification number or card from the public library that has established conditions under which the user may borrow materials or gain access to other library resources. So this is the tricky part where it says files should be purged within the past three years. Um, to us, that means that we're gonna run this if we're running it on a year, we want people whose cards have expired within the last three years. So we will put 2020, 19. So that means it's gonna give you everyone who has a card with these parameters and their privilege expiration date, that date in their account is 2019 and later into the future. That's how we understand it. So, that's what I'm gonna put in the example and we'll, but if you have questions, uh, this one in particular probably is one that you'll want to ask your um, district consultant went on or the Office of Commonwealth Libraries to confirm. Um, it's gonna filter out everyone who's deleted. It's gonna filter out anyone who's barred and it's gonna filter, it's only gonna keep people who have that active box checked. So our output options, again, we'll select, we'll pick our folder where we wanna save it and we'll hit save. <clears throat> okay. 
And our numbers will be, so we'll click our tabular output to get a preview. And here is a rough list based on how I ran it. And it'll give you each library. <clears throat> All right. Any questions on registered users? Okay. The next two are um, really pertain to those individuals who are in resource sharing agreements with others in their, or well, actually any resource sharing libraries and people who share within their system. So if you are in, a, say, Lackawanna, Blair, Cambria, your, not York, York, no, Katie, no, not York, Monroe, those types of groups who have a system that is set up and you're sharing and you need to, yes. Wayne and Pike, yep. Yeah, and I think, um, I think Lehigh Carbon because I think that they're not, yeah. So it's any, um, if you're a federated system, then you do count the trend. Or is this, is this only for out of system transits, Elizabeth, this report? This is for libraries you're providing within Spark. Okay, so yeah, so if you're in a federated system, then you do, and you resource share within your federated system, then you would report those as ILLs. If you're in a consolidated system, um, then you would not report in system transits as ILLs, but you would report out of system transits as ILLs. <laughs> and if you're in a hybrid system, then um, you should talk to us another time because I, I I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so most most people who are here share items with at least one other Spark library that is a different administrative entity. So like a member of a federated system. Okay. So uh, you're going to run this for, and this report looks at items that were sent to or from another library to you or you sent to them for a hold. It doesn't count if that item actually got checked out because that's not what they're looking for. They just want to know the number of items that you provided another library or another library, library provided you. So the first one is F10 old 87 interlibrary loan items provided for other libraries. I want to say that this does not count any items that you sent via share it. So you'll want to look at share it for that number or OCLC. So if you are using other interlibrary loan services. This is one of the numbers that you will be using that you'll add together. Okay. And this is one of the newer ones. So um, we anticipate some questions. Again, uh, this one is gonna be on circulating and owning libraries. So this is items that you provided other libraries. So we'll do by owning, cause that again is the more common one. Yes, Rose, this will be a fun one. Most libraries didn't in the past. So this one will be, I'm a little afraid of this one, <laughs> if I'm honest. So um, this one you'll want, if you're reporting it on multiple buildings, so like Pike or Wayne or whatever, you will you can use the owning library as a pivot table. If you're a single location, um, you don't have to. Um, you want your uh, report folder, and these are going to be within a time frame. So if you wanted to pick, um, we'll use it by the column, the date picker. So this first arrow will go back one month, and this double arrow will go back one year. 
I'm going to pick the 1st of 2022, of January. And I'm going to pick December 31st. So let's do Pike, just to see. We can have our Excel output. This one I would probably strongly encourage to use in Excel. It might be easier to filter out, depending on how many libraries you're reporting on. Again, you can put your email address in, and then uh, you'll pick your folder. And it's going to run. This one might take a little longer, just so you're aware. Um, but again, when it's done, you'll check the box for completed items. And then let's look at the tabular output. OK. So across the top are the owning libraries. And then down the left side, the libraries that you sent the items to. So when you look at this, you will automatically want to discredit any number where the owning library is the same as the destination library. And the reason this is coming up in the report is because we don't have the third column, which is the sending library. So hypothetically, you could own a library or an item, and maybe it was returned to Milford, but you're sending it to Bethany. So there's like a lot of zigzagging. So you'll just want to discredit any number where the destination and the owning are the same. So you'll take this number out, and you'll take out any the Milford to Milford number when you total them up for one set of numbers for this question. Does that make sense? No, <laughs> Chrissy's shaking her head. OK, so uh, along the top are items owned. So Dingman sent, Smith, sent Smithfield branch one item. And they sent Bethany 38, 39. Uh, Northern Wayne 42, so forth. Uh, and just you'll add up all of these numbers, but take out the 227. And then for Milford, when you report this, yes, you may here. Thank you, Rose, for pointing that out. You may see libraries that you are not in resource sharing agreements with or in a system with. And that might be because. They borrowed that item via share it and used your barcode. Or it's a miss scan. Sometimes that happens as well. So Milford, for their number, they would go down and delete, um, add up all the numbers and remove uh, the 383 because they can't lend to themselves. OK? Does that make sense, Rose? OK. Does that make sense to everyone else, too? You can unmute if, if it's easier to ask verbally. OK. Also, so now, wait, no, go, go back. I was today years old when I realized you could sort the output in the in the web interface same <laughs> okay good i didn't oh. know that either <laughs> well, thank goodness. you i'm glad i'm not the only one <laughs> and i were having a little private freak out there <laughs> yeah um i usually export everything to excel and then do everything yeah. from there so yeah. all right so let's look at uh f1188 and this is items that your library received from other libraries. So items that your library received from other Spark libraries. Let's do owning, because that'll be the trend.
again, you'll want to use the dates for 2021. Or if you're using a fiscal, you'll use your fiscal dates. OK. Let's do Lackawanna, because I saw Tessa, and I know she's going to have to run this report. So I'm going to pick all of the Lackawanna locations. And I'm going to pick, in this instance, the destination on the pivot label, because I'm running it um, here for the destination, because Again, we're receiving these items. We are the destination. And then you'll pick your output columns or options and then annual report. And let's run it. Okay. So this is a this is what the county sent to us mm -hmm. right okay yep. Scranton like Scranton itself no it'll be all of Lackawanna County that's sent no it's saying all like sent to to what Scranton or just all mm -hmm. of the county sent to all of the county okay 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 so you can run it just on the Scranton locations if no you just want. yeah okay yes. here let's let's look at it for a okay. second so you have all of the owning library. So owning being the item library that owned the item they sent to you. Okay. Um, I put the destination in the pivot column in this one, okay. Angela. Okay. So this is the owning library. So who owns this item? And then across the top is the destination. So again, Abington can't send itself stuff. So these are hypothetical situations where an item that is on hold that is owned by Abington is being routed back to Abington. So we're okay. just going to discredit that because again, it you doesn't... can't, you can't, it moves. Yeah. You can't send yourself stuff. But um, Abington sent Albright two hundred two thousand two hundred seventeen, and you'll go through. Uh, Lackawanna is in a, a unique <laughs> agreement where they have resource sharing with other Spark libraries. So you'll see those libraries as well. Okay. So Tessa, I know you we do we used to do the two little reports. So this this one yeah. report you can use for both. Okay. I have a question. So in in this one at the top of the screen, so so you I know how you eliminated the 670 because Abington can't send Abington. But then right. the next one, Albright, the 2217. That is how many items that Albright received from Abington. Oh, oh okay. But then the 20, so and then, then I would just eight ten 10 would go. Okay, okay, I got you, I got you. Yep. I just don't want to screw this up. So and yeah, you can you do it. Do it Library by library, if you prefer. If this is, this is too confusing, yeah. I, I'm I like Excel and could do, would prefer to do it all in Excel. But if you don't want to, that is a okay, and you can run it on each of your individual libraries. If you do it in Excel, then it ends up being like you have a row of like a diagonal thing of values that you discount. Yeah. If you have them both, both both rows and columns should be sorted alphabetically. Yeah. So you'll have you and just kind of, you go through and, and all the matches you you subtract. Yeah. If okay. if you want help with that, and okay, thank you, Karen. So if you want help, we can go through on the office hours on Thursday and do this in Excel too. Yep. Um, I'd be ha more than happy. I like to joke that my middle name should be Pivot Table Davis, Elizabeth Pivot Table Davis. <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you a new name tag. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we can do it, Tessa, on Thursday if you'd like, or anyone okay. else who's interested yeah. in using okay. any of the reports in Excel. Uh, <laughs> 
I'd be happy to do that. So yeah. um, and this one, this one is a like more complicated in general. And because they they changed the interpretation, which in my I am actually a fan of the way that they changed the interpretation because it allows um it allows us to really see the breadth of resource sharing among libraries that are not, you know, all one library. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm personally, I'm, I'm a fan of it, but it is going to require some, um, some elbow grease this year in terms of figuring out those reports. And people like Wayne and Pike, where you have some libraries that are branches and some libraries that are not, and you have resource sharing agreements that it's going to going to take just a little bit of sort of flow charting to think about how we want to structure the reports and and we are happy to to do that with any of you we, I, this is uh, resource sharing obviously is one of our favorite things um that we that we do so if we can support the data for it then that's a good day oh thanks cat <laughs> yep this week's office hours come see us on thursday and then there's at least one a week every week until the annual report is due to your district consultants Okay. Any other questions on the interlibrary loan questions? Okay. All right. The other ones are going to seem like easy peasy <laughs> <laughs> in comparison. The next one is circulation of physical items. Again, we'll run it on owning for the year. This one is nice. Again, you'll name it, you'll pick your folder. You can do the pivot name if you want. Oh, wait, let me step back for a moment. There are two in this option. You can run it um, just for everything, or you can run it with call numbers. Some of us um, need call numbers. I don't know if I want call numbers. Yeah, if you don't want it, you'll just run it on circulation of physical items. The first one. We'll do that one. That's probably the more common one. So you'll run it and you'll put the dates in. Or you would pick it from the column picker. Again, if you don't fill out the full date that it means, it will stay red. So red is bad. <laughs> <laughs> you'll um, pick your library. Oh, whose system did I not pick on yet? Vince, we'll do Juniata. Go all the way up to there. You're close to the top. Uh, pick your one library. And then you are running this report. Is the circulation modifiers for physical items. So remember all of those physical things. So I have the shelving or the circulation modifiers in here if you'd like. Or you can pick them all if you want. The next one is the important one. You're going to pick all of the permission groups of patrons, patron permission groups, remember. Your adult, your adult for a year, and you're gonna pick them all except ILL. They don't want ILL in this uh, report because you're gonna be reporting that elsewhere. So again, just pick all of your permission groups. And you're, you'll know uh, better than I do off the top of my head which ones you use. So you'll set your output options. You'll put your email address in if you'd like. And you'll pick your folder and hit save. And let's see. And then we'll have the total circ for the year of physical items.
And then the next one is of other physical items. So do we leave off? Pa yes, patron and SIP are not. Patron in this instance, in that list, is a uh, like a header, like a category header. We don't we don't use just the generic patron. And then SIP is a um, technical connection, so they're never going to circulate anything anyway. So yes, you can leave those off from the list. My apologies. In the physical items, you were supposed to leave out your other stuff. So your reality, your equipment, your electronic devices, you'll run it in this one. Um, the F3 old 51AA. Again, you'll run it the same as the other one. Picking your folder, setting your dates. Um, my power for instance, I'll split hand account for this one. So you'll have your electronic device, your equipment. Again, depending on how you catalog and use kits, you may need that in here. Hi, Tessa. Uh, Realia and software. Again, set your outputs, your folder, and your email. And then we'll have the number for that. Uh, and then the last one is circulation of children's material. So this one you can run two ways. Um, if your library uses very detailed shelving locations, you can use the uh, template that is circulation of children's material by shelving location. And what you would do, again, select it to create the template or to run it. And we're going to pick our dates. You're going to be hearing, you'll pick your dates in your sleep tonight because I've said it so much. Uh, and let's run it on one library. And I saw Angie here. Mm, nope, that's not going to work. Okay. You're going to run it and you're going to pick. And then your shelving locations for your library will list here. Now I'm test I'm logged into a test database and so I don't have a lot of shelving locations. But what you'll do is you will pick the various children's shelving locations, your juve, your toof, your easy, any of the ones that you consider juvenile materials. Oh, I forgot you have to pick your folder. And then you'll run it. And then again, you're gonna pick all of the patron accounts excluding ILL. Now I can't run this because my library doesn't circ anything so <laughs> it's not going to work but it will then just give you again the raw numbers for all of uh, the library name and the shelving location so it'll say like juve easy and it'll tell you how many circulated uh, by library. So. If you have detailed shelving locations, this one is very easy to run. If you do not, you can run it based on the call number. And that is the other option in this folder. This one is a little harder, not impossible, just it's gonna take an extra step. You'll run the report. Let's pick, we're going to pick on Lackawanna again because I know that collection the best. We're going to pick the children's library. We're going to pick all of our shelving locations. 
or all of our patron accounts, excuse me, except ILL. They use all of them. And then we're going to run it. Oh, I forgot the folder. One might take a minute. Oh. And what's going to output is literally the number of times every single call number has circulated. Not horrible. But what you'll want to do in Excel is weed out any of the call numbers like fiction, fiction read, fiction word. I know for a fact, based on our catalog, their cataloging practices, that those are not children's items. They were just borrowed at the children's library. And so anything with juve, I will count. Again, this will require some, you know, use in Excel, but again, we can kind of go through that process uh, with you folks if you need to. Um, but that is just how you kind of have to do it if your library does not use detailed uh, shelving location names. Any questions on children's materials? There is one template left, um, and those, again, are in the non-cataloged item circulation. Either of these, and this depends on if you use non-cataloged items uh, to count things, you may need to run either of these reports for things like Wi-Fi usage. Some libraries use it to keep track of program attendance, um, things like uh, statistical information, some libraries use it for their magazines. So depending on how you use them, if you use them at all, um, you'll want to run both of these. So that's all of the question templates for all of the questions that relate to the ILS. Um, are there any questions? We can certainly go back to any of them if there's some that people want to see again or see with a different variation. Um, the adult versus kids circs is um, one that if you do need to do it by call number, it's a lot easier to do it in Excel. Um, so that's something that we could demo either today or during an office hours if that's something that people need help with. Um, trying to think if there are other niche cases that we didn't um, talk about yet. Yeah. Does anyone have any of them that you don't think we covered? And again, if you feel more comfortable asking the question, you can unmute. Why don't we go ahead and stop the recording? And then if anyone has a question,